Nandito ngayon si Sir Garrett Maralit. So, hello, sir. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me here, Bruno. I'm very honored to be a part of Investa Learn or yung program nga na Investagram. Yes, very sir. happy salamat. to be here. Thank you, thank maraming you. salamat, maraming salamat kasi in-accept in- niyo yung invite. So, introduce ko lang kita, sir. Sino nga ba si Sir Garrett? So, siya ay licensed chemical engineer. He graduated in UPD. And now, he is the co-founder of The Bright Millennial. It's a social media brand that promotes financial literacy and it's focused on, on young professionals. Aside from that, he is also a financial advisor and a registered financial uh, planner. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. Bro. All right. So, bago lahat, sir, uh, bro, kumusta naman yung ECQ mo? San, kumusta yung lockdown mo? Okay naman. Nag-just uh, lang naman sa bahay. Sumusunod lang tayo sa rules and all. And we're trying to be parang as much as much as we can na maging productive, no? Kahit na medyo struggle talaga siya, lalo na sa industry namin, sa line of work namin. Medyo struggle talaga. But still, buhay pa naman, bro. Buhay pa naman. That's... Buhay pa naman. <laughs> Alright, so, sir, pag-usapan natin yung so looking at your credentials, no? Napansin ko na meron kang shift from becoming an engineer to becoming a financial advocate. No? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, ano yung naging inspiration mo? Or how did you jump from becoming and practicing engineering then to finance? Alright. Napakalayo, no? <laughs> I, I, uh, I get that a lot. Na yan, yung, yan yung usual na question. Paano ako naging napunta sa financial services from being, uh, from being an engineer? Mm-hmm. And siguro yung pinaka-background dapat na malaman natin here is Ako, bro, I'm very introverted in nature. Diba? I consider myself as an introvert. I really don't like talking too much or kung magsasalita man ako, siguro yung parang bare minimum lang. Talagang kailangan lang magsalita. So, kaya ako nag-engineer siguro. No? Uh, all, all of my life, I wanted to become an engineer. When I was growing up, I, I wanted to become an engineer. Kaya yun yung kinuha ko na course in college. Pero to be honest with you, nung nandun na ako sa, sa college, medyo struggle pa rin. Um, hindi naging madali talaga. Pero, yun, by the grace of God, I actually got to graduate on time. And then, finally, I, I got my license then November 2014. So, I graduated uh, April 2014. Uh, then, the board exam was November 2014. And mm-hmm. after that, I landed my first job as an engineer. Uh, actually, isang job lang, isang isang engineering uh, company, isang engineering role lang yung nakuha ko. Before ako nag-transition to financial services, I was... Uh, part of a uh, cement manufacturing company. Nag-stay ako dun for three years. So, ano nangyari? <laughs> Bakit ako biglang napunta dito? I guess, nung nandun na ako sa, en- nandun na ako sa engineering role na yun, parang hindi siya yung nakita ko um, parang long-term plan ko for myself. Mm-hmm. Parang hindi siya yung nakita kong um, kumbaga calling ko na dun ako magtatagal. I mean, okay naman yung trabaho. Okay naman yung pay and all. Okay yung mga tao that I get to work with. Pero parang there, there was something lacking. Parang I, I, I wanted to find something else na parang mas magbibigay siguro ng meaning. Di ba yun yung usual na, mm. usual na ano natin eh. Na as, as young professionals, parang we're trying to look for something uh, that we could do something meaningful. Di ba? Mm-hmm. And by that time, parang medyo na lost ako nun bro. Parang ano nang gagawin ko? Di ba? Ito, na yung, ito yung gusto kong mangyari all, all of my life eh. Simula nung bata ako, gusto kong maging engineer. Tapos pagdating ko doon, nung engineer na ako, parang, okay, ito na pala yun. Parang, what's, what's next? Diba? What's next? Uh, ano nang gagawin ko sa buhay ko? Medyo na-lost ako nun. And hindi naman sa, hindi naman sa lack of ambition or lack of uh, plans. Actually, for, for most of us nga, for most of us na young people, I think sobrang dami natin gustong gawin. Diba? Would you agree with that? Sobrang dami natin gustong gawin to the point na nahihirapan tayong maghanap. Saan tayo? Ano ba yung ifo-focus natin? Diba? So, nangyari din sa akin yun. Uh, before I went in the, into the financial services, uh, I went into digital marketing. Actually, naging part din on Investagrams mm. uh, uh. before. Uh, diba? uh, as your social media ano, manager. And then, um, nag-data science din ako. nag din ako ng data science konti. And then, finally, I stumbled upon this ad on Facebook na parang he, she is trying to build her team of financial advisors. So, mm. na-curious ako kasi... Even before I saw that ad, um, may, may policy na ako noon eh. 21 na ako nag-start ng pol- policy ko. And I think 23 ko nakita yung ad. So, mga two years after. And uh, na-curious ako. And alam ko sales role yung 
yung financial advisor, alam ko na pagiging sales person siya. So naisip ko na, nag-reflect ako, uh, bagay kaya sa akin to, eh, introverted niya ako eh. Diba? Parang I don't have I don't have any prior sales skills to this. Wala akong sales background before this. Um, I have very limited communication skills. I, I don't like talking to people. Kung pwedeng hindi, hindi. Tsaka pag, uh, nag, tsaka pag ano, pag uh, marami akong kausap bro in front of me, kinakabahan talaga ako. Medyo ngayon ko na lang nakoconquer yung fear na yun eh. Pero dati talagang sobrang extreme. And um, I, I really have a hard time of re- uh, building relationships with people. Kasi, yun niya eh. Very reserved person ako eh. Konti lang talaga yung close friends ko. Very tight lang yung yung circle of friends that I have. And I have and to add to that, very limited din yung network ko. So parang kung titignan mo lahat ng factors na yun, it doesn't make sense for me to be in a sales position or for me to become a financial advisor. But I went I went for it anyway. And totoo nga, challenging talaga siya to the point na parang gusto ko na mag-resign before. But sabi ko sa sarili ko, I need to do this properly. Diba? Kailangan ko munang gawin yung 100% ko. 100% best effort muna ako. Pagka hindi nag-work, tsaka ako aalis. Okay? Kasi my problem was, bro, was I have a very limited network. So I, I need to find some way for me to expand my network. And one of the ways that I found na kami, kinofound niya namin ni fiance ko, was the Bright Millennial. Okay? So the Bright Millennial was, yes, was founded for two main reasons. Number one, Diba, very obvious naman as for us Filipinos, diba, medyo kailangan talaga natin ng level up when it comes to our financial literacy game. Diba, we need some more programs para ma-level up natin yan. So, naisip namin, kung yung mga tao nasa Facebook might as well add value to Facebook, put personal finance on Facebook. Okay, so that's one uh, main goal. Number two, I need to expand my network. I need to find some ways to actually get some leads for my insurance business. So, yun yung two main parts. So, ang dami ko na sinabi na pero basically, mm. ganun, ganun yung transition namin. Bro. Ayan. Okay. So, ang ganda ng story kasi despite na tingin mo hindi siya for you, pinasok mo pa rin siya. So, ano yung main inspiration mo dun? Ano yung nakita mo? Bakit nag-jump ka pa rin kahit feel mo hindi for you to? Alright. So, I have, with all, in all honesty, no, maganda mm. talaga yung ano yun. It's a very lucrative industry. No? And uh, okay naman talaga siya if you, do, if you do your part well. So that's one. Number two, I really see the value of me doing this or of me talking to people about this. Ako, I believe everyone should actually uh, manage their money well. I believe everyone sh- uh, has a need for insurance, lalo na may mga, may mga, ano na, may mga tao na nakadepend sa income nila. So I really believe that what I'm doing is meaningful. So might as well stay, on, stay in this. And kaya naman eh, di ba? If you, if you go all out, kaya naman siya i-sustain. Okay. So, napansin ko, isa pala. Maraming, I'm just gonna jump here, no? Maraming financial advisor ngayon. Mm-hmm. Marami tayong financial advisor sa Pilipinas. And, hindi, wala man ako statistical numbers to show. Pero, at least, lahat tayo, na-approach na tayo ng at least isang financial advisor. I guess, I guess diba? that's right. So personally, ako medyo marami nang nag-approach sa akin na financial advisor. And ang impression nun sa akin is very, very interesting industry nga siya. Tulad ng sinabi mo. And sobrang laki ng demand. Kasi sobrang daming tao na pumapasok into this industry. So can you tell me what makes this very, very attractive Okay. So, since we're going to be talking about financial advisors, gusto ko lang mag-disclaimer, no? Lahat ng okay. sasabihin ko, uh, personal opinion ko lang, it does not reflect the views of my company. Okay? Disclaimer lang. Sige, so, sige. Bakit, bakit, siya, bakit, siya, ano, bakit siya interesting na, na industry? Number one, yun yung nabanggit ko na kanina, it really pays well if you do it right. It, ano kasi siya, hindi siya parang employment, eh. It's like a business. Mm-hmm. Okay? It's like a business that uh, yung, yung income mo, would actually be um, proportional to your effort, to your results. Kumbaga dito, you're not paid because of your time. You're paid because of your results. Kung ano output mo. Output ba siya in short. Okay? So, um, di ba for most of us, we would want to get a, 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 a career na medyo flexible, na medyo may work-life integration yan na tinatawag. No? So dito, 
you could actually manage your time kung kailan mo gagawin yung activities mo. Wala kang mm-hmm. 9 to 5, wala kang schedule na ganun. And um, depende rin sa'yo kung gano'ng activities yung gagawin mo. So, syempre, pwede yung maging, pwede yung maging advantage to you, to you, pwede rin disadvantage. Depende na yun sa mindset mo dun sa sarili mong behavior. No? So, isa yun. Number two, um, yun niya eh. Sabi mo na kanina, there's a lot of demand for this. Diba? Lalo na ngayon, yung, yung, yung country natin, yung mga tao dito, we are getting more open to talk about our finances. Dati kasi parang hindi eh. Dati parang kapag pinag-usapan mo yung pera, parang it's taboo. Lalo na pag pinag-usapan mo yung death, di ba? Ayaw nang pag-usapan ng mga tao yan. Eh pag pinagsama mo yung death and money, that's insurance. And people would like to stay away from those conversations. So ngayon, nagkakaroon na ng awareness eh. Marami na kasi mga programs about this. And even yung generations natin, we're more open to uh, ideas like this. Diba? May mga, marami ng financial planning sessions, marami mga sem- seminars on this. So, nagiging mas open-minded na tayo dito sa concept na to. Okay? So, since may demand na siya, and kahit na maraming advisors, I would say, hindi, mali pa rin yung penetration ng insurance. Eh. So, probably, hindi pa ganun ka parang full force. Marami, marami pa rin, marami pa rin, ano, marami pa rin opportunity dito. So, yun. Um, it's a profession na driven ka dapat ng mission mo. Lalo na ngayon sa times na to, we have to be very sensitive, no? Kahit na na-heighten talaga yung awareness on insurance, syempre, with all these things happening, naka-crisis pa rin tayo ng all. Syempre, it's very insensitive na push ka ng push ng insurance. Yes. Mm. Uh, so, given na uh, ngayon nga, meron tayong health crisis, ano yung ginagawa ngayon ng mga financial advisor to, to survive or to continue their work. Okay. So, una-una, yung pagiging financial advisor kasi, it doesn't end naman with the sales. Diba? Mm-hmm. Kapag ka na-close na yung deal, it, does, it shouldn't end with that. So, one of the main goals na ginagawa ng mga financial advisors ngayon is to actually get in touch with with their existing clients. Kung baga, kakamustahin mo rin sila. Kamusta ka ba, client? Okay ka pa ba? May effect ba sa itong ECQ and all? And, uh, ako, I, what, what I would do is, parang I would offer a policy review na since medyo hot topic nga yung insurance ngayon, I would offer my services na reviewin yung mga policy coverage no? para lang malinawan sila ano ba yung mga pwedeng gawin or ano ba yung coverage nila. Para naman, para maging ano, para magkaroon na sila ng peace of mind, ma- ma- ma-refresh sila na okay, covered nga pala ako nito. So kung may mangyari man sa akin, at least may maiwan sa family ko. Now, sa so business side naman, Kasi the insurance commission has allowed us to do remote selling or online uh, applications of insurance. So the, the, the public is now allowed to avail insurance online and have it processed online. Okay? So we can actually do that. And um, medyo struggle lang siya. No? Medyo struggle siya kasi nga, syempre hindi naman priority ng mga tao insurance ngayon, di ba? Parang priority natin ngayon is survival. So less income for the public. So, medyo lower din talaga yung buying power. Okay. Pero meron, pero meron. Meron namang mga, meron namang mga tao na they, they would still want to get themselves insured, get, them, get their family insured. Tapos pwede namang i-process online. Hmm. Okay. Alright. So, moving on naman. I'd like to know more about the story naman of the Bright Millennial. So, na-mention mo na kanina kung paano siya nag-start. Can you tell us a brief story kung paano nyo na co-found ni Miss Anne, yung The Bright Millennial? Alright. So, yun niya, di ba? Yung na-mention ko na kanina yung two problems na winish namin i-address ni Bright Millennial. Number one, yung the financial literacy of the Filipinos. And number two, is for lead generation. So, yung name nun, medyo base lang siya dun sa target audience eh. Kasi target audience mm-hmm. namin was obviously millennials, di ba? Yung bright naman niya, it's medyo ano siya, medyo affiliated siya or medyo may related siya dun sa company that I represent. Kaya siya bright. So pinagsama lang namin yun, bright millennial. And um, ang nakakatawa dun, kasi kami ni Al, parehas kaming wala kaming marketing background. Parehas kaming walang background on, on graphics or layout design. Wala kaming ganun. So everything na ginagawa namin ngayon, nagsimula lang to lahat from scratch. And lahat na to, inara lang namin on our, on our own. 
So makikita mo kung titingnan mo kung titingnan mo yung mga mga content namin before. Uh, nag-start kami August 2017, no. Pag tinag pag tinignan mo yung mga content before and now, ang laki ng difference. And siguro kung may mga ganun man tayo nakikinig na ngayon, no, na gusto maging content creator or something like that. Yung perfection should not uh, hinder you from actually starting. Diba? Yun yung gusto kong i-share lagi. Kasi kami hindi naman kami expert eh. Kung dito yung mga dati, hindi naman din ganyan kaganda yung content. Pero we started with something. We started with something and then we focus on improving our craft. Para eventually, diba, habang ginagawa namin to, we noticed that we are adding more and more value to our audience. And I think yun na rin yung naging secret eh, kung bakit lumaki yung following ni Bright Millennium. Kasi we were, hindi, hindi, hindi selling yung main, ano niya, hindi selling yung main goal niya. The main goal is to actually add value to its audience. Okay? Kasi organic yun bro, yun, yung almost 300,000 na followers namin. Organic yun. Hindi kami naga ads for, for that purpose. So, I think, kaya siya lumaki ng ganun kasi people would really see value on what we share. Tapos, share nila sa friends nila, share nila sa family nila. Tapos, di ba, exponential na yung reach. Alright, totoo. So, kung mapapansin mo, no, parang mas madali yung success if you're doing it with the right reasons, not just for the selling or for the profits. And yes, may, may kita naman natin sa The Bright Millennial na successful yung strategy if you focus on on being, on caring for your customers no, instead of getting money from them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Parang ang tip niya dyan is you give value first before uh-huh. you ask for business. Or minsan nga, hindi mo na kailangan mag-ask eh. Parang automatic na they would come to you. Tama. So, alright. So, with that, <coughs> let's move on to the next question naman. So, Bright Millennial. Mm-hmm. So, aside from the branding na, ayun, Bright <coughs> uh, from your company and Millennial, yung target audience nyo, what do you consider a bright millennial. Alright. Okay. Medyo ano yun, no? medyo, unang-una pala, I don't consider myself as the bright millennial. The bright millennial ah, talaga, is the community. Talaga. The community okay. that, we're, that we built or that we are building. Yun yung bright millennial. So yung part ng page, yung part ng yung Facebook group, sila yung bright millennial. Okay. Okay. Yung generation na yun. So what what do we consider as bright millennial? Well, hindi lang naman siya sa finance. Eh. Pero if we're going to talk about finance, obviously, Ang isang bright millennial, marunong siya mag-handle ng finance niya. He is a good steward of his wealth. He understands na yung wealth niya and yung ability niya to create wealth is galing lang yan kay Lord. Alam niya na pinahiram lang yan. Alam, alam niya na manager lang siya nung pinahiram ni Lord sa kanya. So alam dapat, alam niya i-manage and i-manage na for good. Okay, hindi lang pang sa sarili niya, para rin sa mga tao sa paligid niya. So we're not really just investing, saving for ourselves, but we are also thriving to mag-invest and mag-save din tayo for the people around us to become channels of blessing din. So that's one sa, sa finance side. No? And then, kami, uh, we, 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 we emphasize din on the value of personal development. Diba? Bright Millennia should always be growing, should always be striving to improve his or herself. Kumbaga, Import, ngayon, di ba? Lalo ngayon, dami nang nangyayaring changes ngayon. We're not really sure what's going to happen. Pero if you're continual, continuously growing, if you're continuously adopting to all the things change, parang you shouldn't worry as much, eh. Di ba? Mm-hmm. Okay, so, as a bright millennial, sa finance, financial side naman, di ba? We need to be able to manage and protect our wealth. And yun yung yeah. isa sa advocates talaga ni bright millennial. So, my question is, what do you think destroys wealth? What do you think destroys wealth? Siguro greed. greed. Like, uh, masyado tayong greedy. Like, uh, when it comes to, even sa, sa, sa investing, minsan we are too greedy that we just focus on the returns. We don't really look at the risk. We don't look at how it works. Kaya, mad, kaya maraming tao nasa scam kasi nabubulag sila na kanilang greed. Mm-hmm. Tinitingnan nila, ay, ang laki na ito ah. Diba? And, Pagka, na, pagka na-victimize tayo ng scam, wala, ubus na tayo. Ubus na yung, yung pera na pinagkaipunan natin. Sayang naman. Diba? So I, I think uh, greed tsaka too much love of money. Mm. Diba? I think money in itself hindi naman siya evil eh. Kasi money would just amplify 
what you currently are. Kung kunwari mabait ka tapos marami kang pera, edi mas magiging mabait ka kasi gagamitin mo yung pera mo for for generosity, for philanthropy. Pero kung hindi ka ganun ka ganda o gali mo, tapos may pera ka, you might use it to abuse your power. Parang you abuse your money. So, I think too much love of it na parang ano na, misguided na yung intentions mo sa pera mo. Okay, so so greed and basically hindi pagiging literate enough financially, di ba? Kasi mas prone ka to scams din. Yes. Uh-oh. How about debt? Utang? Uh-huh. Think of debt. I think debt, depende eh. Di ba? Parang lagi natin naririnig yung, yung comparison between good debt and bad debt. Ako niniwala naman ako dun. Depende siguro dun sa intention of the debt. Bakit mo kinuha yung loan in the first place? Did you take out the loan just for you to get, for just for you to buy a new gadget? Kung yung gadget na yun would actually be of help to you to your business. Eh, kunwari, bumili ka ng laptop kasi kailangan mo yung pang-edit mo. Then pwede. No, pwede naman siguro. Pero if you're trying to get a loan just for something that you don't actually need, tapos you don't actually can, you don't actually can afford it, no? So parang sayang. Diba? Bakit ka nag-loan pa? And um, common pitfall yan lalo na sa mga bata. Sa mga bata din, no, common din yan. Kasi parang ang akala natin ang link lang niya. Pero kakautang mo, hindi mo napapansin, palaki na ng palaki yung utang mo. Eh. Nababawon ka na sa utang. Lalo na yung mga credit card. I mean, okay naman may credit card. Diba? Very powerful tool yan to leverage with. Pero you need to have the proper discipline to own a credit card. Kasi kung wala, wala eh, kakainin ka yan. Kakaskas ka lang ng kakaskas. Tapos, hindi mo na mamamala yan. Dami mo na utang. Tama. So, most likely, no, kung millennial ka siguro, sana hindi ka pa nababaon sa utang. Pero do you have any advice to those na nabaon na sa utang na masyadong maraming debt and uh, nahilapan sila to pay it off? Do you have any steps or advice na mabibigay sa kanila? Uh-huh. Okay. So, tama ka. No? Sana hindi pa nabaon sa utang. Pero if nandun ka na nga sa, sa face na yun, Number one, you have to parang reframe your mindset na yung pagkakautang mo na ngayon, hindi yan part of your personality. Hindi, hindi mo yan identity. It's just a face na pwede mong alisan, na pwede mong lagpasan. Kasi kung kunwari, inattach mo na talaga yung mautang mo sa identity mo. Ang hirap nun, bro. Ang bigat nun sa feeling. So you have to realize na face lang yan. Kayang-kaya mo yan lampasan. So yun muna. Kailangan mo muna i-accept yun. Accept mo muna. Sige, may utang ako. Nagkaroon ako ng mga bad uh, decisions before. Ha- accept all of those kailangan mo muna tanggapin yan. And then, pagkakalmado ka na, di ba, na-accept mo na yung reality na yun. Then, sorry, may ngayon may background. Okay lang, okay lang. Um, pag na-accept mo na yung reality na yun, then, gawa na tayo ng mga concrete plans paano natin i- i-eliminate yung debt. Ako, kung kunwari marami kang, you have multiple ano, debts, uh, I would um, recommend yung tinatawag nilang snowball method. Ito, yung snowball method, unahin mo yung mga debt mo na medyo maliit lang. In amount. Okay? Maganda sana kung unahin mo yung mga may malalaking interest, di ba? Para hindi na siya mag-accumulate ng interest. Pero, pwede rin yun. Pwede mo rin gawin yun. Pero ito kasing sa snowball, uh, mga ba yung full? Basta yung parang ganun. Kaya siya snowball kasi magsisimula siya sa maliit. Tapos, di ba, pagka nag-roll down siya ng hill, lalaki siya ng lalaki. So, ganun din yun. Unahin mo ni maliliit mong utang. And then, palaki ng palaki. Bakit siya effective? Kasi you get the sense of achievement kapag ka na-chechikan mo yung mga small na mga utang mo. So parang, uy, okay, kaya ko pala magbayad, di ba? So natanggal ko na yung una, punta na ako sa next utang ko. Tanggal ko na yung pangalawa, punta na ako sa pangat. It builds momentum, kumbaga. It builds momentum. It's, it's, it's an easy way for you to build momentum. So yun, pwede mong gawin yun. Mm. Okay, so pwede rin pala gamitin in that way yung snowball effect. Kasi nung unang narinig ko siya, nakapertain siya sa utang. So, di ba kung umuutang ka or may mga cost ka, tas palaki ng palaki yun, uh-huh. like, snowball effect din yung utang mo or yung mga gastusin mo. Correct. So, to reverse that, pwede mo rin pala gamitin yung concept na yun. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Ganda, ganda. So, let's talk about the main goal naman for the millennials or for everyone, which is financial freedom, financial independence, financial success. Diba? So, as the co-founder of The Bright Millennial, what do you think we should start doing as millennials? Alright. 
So I think we should revisit the basics now. Kung hindi mo pa siya natignan before. Or at least, we start with the basics. Kasi for most millennials, kasi parang na-attribute na sa atin sa generation natin yung masyadong nagmamadali. Eh. Gusto natin fast-paced lahat. And ganun kasi yung culture natin. Eh, di ba ngayon lahat madali and all that. And mapapansin mo yan sa, sa finance area. No? People or millennials would go directly to investing. Without doing the proper invest, without proper, without doing the proper preparations, okay. Invest ka agad. Eh, for me, if you're going to ask me, ano ba yung tamang financial planning? You need to undergo the proper preparations before you go to investing, okay. So ano ba yung basics natin? Isa isa natin yung basics, no. Number one, you need to have a healthy cash flow, no? Because yun yung so yun yung foundation. Eh. If you don't have a healthy cash flow, uh, that means you have positive, no. You have surplus. So, kung wala ka surplus, ano yung pang invest mo in the first place? Okay? You need to first build the habit of saving. Kailangan lagi ka munang merong naiipon. You spend less than what you earn. Diba? Sobrang cliche na ng mga sinasabi ko. Pero I, I think kailangan talaga natin siyang ulit-ulitin. Eh. Kasi kahit na ang dali niyang sabihin, ang dami pa rin hindi nakagawa. Diba? We have to understand that. So, we need to uh, address muna yung cash flow natin. So, how do we do that? Uh, we track our expenses, we do budgeting, mga boring stuff to eh. Mga boring stuff siya, aminin natin yan, hindi siya exciting gawin. Pero if you do this well, this would actually help you to build your wealth in the long run. Pag nakasanayan mo tong gawin. Okay? So, tingnan mo yan, ano ba yung mga pwede mong... Dalawa lang naman yan eh. Diba? Offensive siya defensive. Either patasin mo yung income mo, you get multiple streams of income, and you do this by learning. Kumbaga, kumbaga nga, you earn more when you learn more. Mas marami kang skills, mas magaling yung skills mo, mas maraming opportunity na pwede mong gamitin para kumita ka ng pera. Okay? So, that's, so yun. Pwede kang maghanap ng sources of income. And then sa other end naman, syempre, hindi naman enough na malaki lang yung kinikita mo. Dapat alam mo rin paano yung manage yung malaking kinikita mo. Kasi marami rin na nangyayari. Malaki nga yung kinikita niya, pero malaki din yung expenses niya. So, at the end of the day, wala pa rin siyang naiipon. Okay? So, cash flow. Then, kanina nabanggit na natin yung about debts. Di ba? May utang ka ba? Kung merong utang, you might want to pay that off. Okay? Kasi, kapag ka may utang ka, nakaka-stress yan eh. Nakaka-stress may utang, di ba? And you would want to uh, pay off muna lahat ng financial obligations mo kasi um, hindi naman free money yan. Hindi naman yun yung agreement nyo ng pinagkautangan mo eh. And probably, baka kailangan din yan, lalo na ngayon. Baka kailangan niya yung money. So, kung kaya natin bayaran, bayaran natin. And then, um, the next will be your emergency fund. Diba? One of the most um, ignored topics in personal finance, emergency funds. Kasi yung generation natin, we were raised in a time na parang lahat naman okay. Diba? Parang yung crisis na to, parang bago sa atin to. Eh. Na ngayon lang natin na-experience na pwede palang mangyari itong ganito. So, yung idea of uh, emergency fund before is very abstract na parang kailangan ko ba yan? Parang hindi naman mangyayari yan. Eh. Ngayon, nasample lang tayo. Biglang nagkaroon ng COVID. Biglang nagkaroon ng ECQ. So, if you were someone who prepared your emergency fund, at least that's one thing, that's one less thing to worry about during these times, di ba? Sa kahit na-extend na-extend, at least meron kang pagkukunan kahit pa paano. If medyo hindi tayo nakapag-prepare for it, then medyo mahihirap, medyo mas mahihirapan tayo at this time. So, what we can do now, kung kung narin, talaga tayo nakapag-prepare, no? we have to reflect and we have to learn as much as we can sa nangyari na to. Para pag naulit-ulit in the future, then mas ready na tayo. Okay? Then after emergency fund, you have to cover naman your insurance. Diba? You need to make sure that you have the proper coverage. Kasi risk management tool to eh, yung insurance. Hindi eh. naman siya masabi lang na may insurance ka okay na. You have to make sure that you have the right insurance. So I think yun, yun muna. You need to cover first the basics. Kasi pwede ka naman mag-invest anytime eh. Pagka na-cover mo na yung basics eh. Kapag ka solid na yung foundation mo eh. And actually ito pala yung pinakauna nakalimutan ko. You need to set a goal. Mm. You need to set your intentions. Why would you want to actually um, manage your money well? Diba? Bakit? Bakit ka ba mag-iipon? Bakit ka ba mag invest Is there a particular reason? while you're doing this, or wala lang, gusto mo lang dumami pera mo, you have to establish that first. Kasi, mahirap siya eh. Di ba? Mahirap mag-manage ng money kung wala kang motivation. 
Okay? Yung motivation mo na yun, yung goal mo na yun, yung dreams mo sa buhay mo, yun yung mga bagay that would drive you to continue what you're doing, to continue saving, to continue investing rather than just spending it all. So you have to set that first. Your why. Alright. So ikaw, personally, you're more of a goal-oriented person. Tama ba? Uh, yes, I think so. <laughs> I would like to think so, no? Okay. Sige. So, another topic na laging napag-uusapan when it comes to personal finance is yung delayed gratification. Mm-hmm. So, ano yung opposite nung delayed gratification, di ba? Yun yung carpe diem or parang living in the moment. Instant. Instant naman. Oh, instant gratification. So, iba-iba tayo as millennials, di ba? Yung mga younger millennials, siguro mas gusto natin mag-travel, mag, uh, mm-hmm. mag-explore. Mm-hmm. Tapos, yung mga older millennials, siguro, mas nag-focus sila on building wealth for the future. Yeah. So, can you give us a little bit of advice kung paano natin mababalance yung both? Ayun. Gusto ko yung term na ginamit mo yung balance, no? Kasi wala namang mali, eh. There's really nothing wrong if you spend on what on the things that you value. Like, kunwari, iba-iba lang naman kasi tayo ng binavalue, eh. Kunwari, nabanggit mo kanina, yung older millennials, they would value their um, yung kanilang life stage na yun. Mag-family na sila, um, yung house, yung car, ganyan. Yun yung binavalue nila at this point of their life. Yung mga younger millennials naman, yun yan, more of, more of experiences. And parehas naman tama. Parehas naman okay yan. Kasi, Depende sa yun eh kung ano yung binavalue mo eh. Personal finance is personal. 'Di ba? Depende sa iyo 'yan kung ano yung mas nagwo-work sa iyo, ano yung uh, pinapahalagahan mo. But lahat naman ng sobra, mal- lahat naman ng sobra delikado eh, 'di ba? We need to put some kind of allocation. We need to put some kind of uh, limits to your spending. Example, um let's say gusto mo mag-travel. Wala namang mali dun ako. I, I do travel no before this before all of this happen and medyo maraming ang na-cancel na flights pero eh pero yun okay lang naman mag-travel um kinagas parang winawaldas ko ba yung pera ko doon hindi diba? that's that to me is actually some some form of investment eh diba? para sa akin investment yun i get to immerse myself in different cultures pero i actually save up for it ginawa ko yung travel fund ko hindi siya nanggaling sa savings fund ko hindi siya nanggaling sa long term investments ko hindi siya nanggaling sa retirement fund ko Travel fund ko talaga siya. Yun talaga yung purpose niya. Let's say on a monthly basis, I would assign or I would allocate ang tawag ko fund fund eh. Na, nabasa ko lang din yun somewhere. Fund fund. Fund so, fund. Gina- F-U-N. Oh, fun, fun. Ah. F-U-N. Oh. Isa yun yung ginagamit kong funds for my trips. Kung nga rin, mag-travel ako. Kung nga rin, travel ko six months from now pa. So yung, yung fund fund ko, hindi ko siya gagalawin para mag-accumulate lang siya to the time na aalis na ako, meron na akong budget for my travel. Okay. So you have to well there's really nothing wrong if you enjoy it today eh. Diba? As, as long as you put a limit. Inilit ko lang sa ko kanina. You put a limit lang. Kunwari 20% of your income of your monthly income would go to your wants or your fun fund. Then you stick with 20%. Tapos the rest of your money, you you pay off your bills, you pay off your obligations and then you invest for your future. I think yes, madali siyang sabihin no, pero um medyo mahirap siyang gawin. But you need to start. And hindi naman kailangan malaki ka agad yung ini-invest mo or sinisave mo. You could start small kung yun yung, yun yung comfortable sa'yo. Ang important dito, you build the habit. You build the proper habits. You build the good habits. Alright. So, personally, ikaw, ilan percent ina-allocate mo sa fun fund mo? Ako, ano? Um, mga 10 to 20 percent per month. 10 to 20 per month. Uh-oh. Okay. Alright, sige. So, for the next naman, do you have any mentors right now? Sino yung nagturo sa'yo or nag-inspire sa'yo with all these things? I think yung pinaka-mentor ko ngayon, si, ano, nag-meet mo na nga, nag-meet na nga tayo before lahat, si Kuya Randall. Si Randall Chongson. And even yung pinaka-basic framework ko when it comes to personal finance. And even yung tinuturo ko sa clients ko. Sa kanya rin naman nang galing yun dun sa book niya na No Nonsense Personal Finance. And, the reason why I'm teaching that is it's very practical eh. Wala nang kono ano pang kono nang sinasabi na medyo ano, medyo wala namang sense. At least yun, very practical. Susundin mo na lang siya. And it's a step-by-step process. You could really be guided. 
So, I, I, I would say siya yung sa mga main, main, main mentors ko right now. Paano mo na-meet si Sir Randall? Uh, ano rin, through the Bright Millennial din. No? So, hindi lang siya actually um, dun sa insurance business ko nakatulong. Nakatulong din siya to open uh, opportunities for me, open doors for me. And yun nga yung one of the one of the doors that na open was I get to collaborate with these influencers, with these um, parang mentors, no. So, meron kasing event sila kuya Randall called Icon. Mm. Are, are you familiar with that? Icon 2018 ata yun time na yun. So what I did was parang we offered to help marketing yung kanilang event through the Brett Millennial. So we we tried to collaborate with him. Tapos yun, pumayag naman siya and then eventually we get we got to do some projects na rin uh, together and yung pinaka nag-connect siguro sa amin was in church na eh. Kasi eventually, parang he got to disciple me rin kasi we were part of uh, Victory Green Hills and parang dun na mas lumalim yung relationship namin and more of, um, yun yung more of disciple, disciple mentor ganun. Ah, so, pero before nun, Victory ka na talaga or siya ba yung nagdala sa to Victory? Um Victory na ako noon. Victory na ako noon. Ibang ah. ano lang, ibang congregation, ibang oh, okay. parang branch. Sige, aside from learning from your mentors, do you have any life-changing books? Life-changing books? Mm-mm. Ano bang life-changing books? Ang dami kasi, ang daming Siguro yung yung pinaka yung pinakauna ko naisip yung ano seven ano yung seven effective habits ay seven habits of highly effective people. Highly effective people. Yun yung pinaka yun yung pinakauna ko naisip. Kasi lahat naman para yung mga gusto mong results, it will it will oil bo- it will all boil down to the habits that you have. So kung maganda yung habits na ginagawa mo, eventually makukuha mo rin yung results na gusto mo eh, kahit hindi siya agad-agad. Hmm. So speaking of habits, do you have daily routines? Especially ngayong ECQ, di ba? Okay. Ano bang gusto mong sagot? Yung honest o yung inspiring? <laughs> <laughs> Siyempre yung honest. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually ngayong ECQ na talagang nawasak yung ano ko. I, I'm a very rigid person. Ayoko masyado ng change. Mm. Uh, I try to adopt, no? Pero pag ako narin may mga nangyaring ganyan change, medyo nahihirapan ako. Like ngayon, nagsettle kami dito sa sa Laguna. Wala ako sa house ko. Na, na, uh-huh. Nasa house ako ng, iba, nasa Laguna ako right now. E medyo iba yung surroundings ko. E nasanay na ako na dito ako mag-work, tapos dito ako matutulog, dito ako kakain. So na, na lahat ng routine ko all, before all of this, nawasak siya. So mm-hmm. ngayon, I'm trying to create a new routine. And, di ba, medyo magto two months na tayo. Siguro after one month pa ako naka-adjust. And, um, siguro bigyan ko lang kayo ng konting idea sa routine ko. Um, una kong ginagawa, I do my quiet times sa, sa morning. I read my Bible, I pray. Yung una kong ginagawa, I worship. Ganun. After that, um, syempre yung mga, yung mga usual, kakain ka, toothbrush, ilamos. Yan. Tapos, sa morning, I do mo, most of my meetings sa morning. Client meetings. Mm-hmm. Para may energy pa ako. Kasi medyo mabilis madrain yung energy ko eh. Mabilis madrain. So, mga 10 o'clock, start na ako ng meeting ko hanggang mga 4 or 5 p.m. Yan. So, client meetings or meetings with the team or mga webinars, learning webinars. Yan yung mga ginagawa ko ngayon. And then, pagdating mga 6, ganyan, medyo cool down na ako. Uh, dinner. Tapos, ang usual na ginagawa natin dito, yung mga kasama kasi ako mga advisors ko dito, yung part ng, ng team ko. Nagko-call of duty kami sa gabi mm-hmm. <laughs> bago matulog. So, yun yung routine ko ngayon. So, after nito, code kayo. After oh. itong interview. <laughs> Gina, Gina. Gina. <laughs> Alright. Sige, few questions na lang no, para maka-start na rin kayo ng laro. <laughs> sige. So, uh, sige sir. Since, di ba, right now you're engaged. Mm-hmm. Tama ba? Okay. So, is it good to merge your finances with your partner, with your fiancé, with your wife? Okay. Your wife? Siguro I'm not the one to ano, to decide on that. Okay. Mas maganda if you know, mas maganda if you uh, talk with your partner. Kasi if ano siya eh, based sa mga naririnig ko or sa mga stories ng mga other married couples na ahead of us. Iba-iba 'yung nag-work for couples eh. Iba-iba siya. Eh. If mas if okay sa inyo na isa lang 'yung nag-handle ng money, then go for that. If gusto niyo parang parehas kayo may hawak, then go for that. 
basta dapat meron kayong agreement, meron kayong mutual understanding on how you're going to handle your money. Dapat sa simula pa lang na pag-usapan niyo na 'yan kasi mahirap mag-adjust in the middle, mag-aaway niyan. Okay. So kayo personally, pwede mo bang i-share kung ano yung napag-agreehan niyo? Kami ngayon, hindi pa ganoon ka-solid yung agreement namin, pero alam namin na isa lang yung mag-handle. Okay? Ah. We just have to ano, we just have to decide kung sino. Um uh, ano naman eh, parehas naman kaming okay with, the, with regards to money. Ayan, na, tinitignan niya ako ngayon. <laughs> <laughs> so, mukhang siya pala. No? Hindi, hindi ka siguro na ako. Hindi ko pala nakuha yung memo, bro. <laughs> Patay. Uh, yeah. so, kasi kung ano yung tinatanong mo eh. <laughs> Paano na yan? Ang hirap niyan kasi parehas kayong, syempre, parehas kayong co-founder nung Bright Millennial. So, parehas kayong financially okay, di ba? So, uh, I mean, kung siya naman yung mag-handle, wala naman sa akin, wala naman sa akin problem yan. Babawi tayo, bro. <laughs> <laughs> syempre, nandiyan. <laughs> Alright, thank you. Salamat uh, sa pag-share. <laughs> okay, so, pero na akong last question. Pero, before noon gusto ko lang i-acknowledge yung The Bright Millennial kasi, Diba, one of the biggest problems sa Pilipinas is yung financial literacy. And nakikita naman natin na through the years, meron namang improvement. Mm-hmm. Poverty levels natin na babawasan. And very interesting, kanina chinecheck ko yung Google Trends, if familiar ka. Diba, you can search a certain word, tapos makikita mo kung gano'n siya ka-popular throughout mm-hmm. So sinesearch ko kanina yung word na insurance or VUL, or savings account. And napansin ko na tumataas yung trend and mas maraming mas interested. Wow. The Philippines starting mga 2017, 2018. No? So definitely, mukhang maganda naman yung improvements natin as a country. No? As, and sobrang gusto ko lang mag-thank you and acknowledge yung Bright Millennial kasi <coughs> yung advocacy nyo is to really help and to educate Filipinos regarding finance. So, salamat doon. Thank you, Bruno. And likewise din sa Investagrams, no? Grabe yung mission yung 10 million Filipinos. Grabe. Wow. Galing-galing. Yes. So, together, kaya naman natin yung tulong-tulungan lang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, to end this uh, interview podcast, do you have a message to the world ngayon given na ECQ health crisis tayo ngayon? Aha. Uh-huh. Siguro ano lang, you have, you guys, you have to realize that there will be life after the ECQ. And uh, medyo struggle tayo ngayon. We have to accept that. We have to acknowledge our feelings, our emotions right now. Na medyo, uh, we are in trying times. But you have to, ano, you have to realize din that we can bounce back. Diba? If you're going to reflect sa mga nangyari before, before this, marami naman na din crisis na dinaanan yung Pilipinas and even yung mundo. But we always found a way to bounce back. And I believe na kung nag-bounce back tayo before, we can actually bounce back now. Diba? At least kung, kung nga titignan mo yung economy natin ngayon as compared sa economy natin dati. So, mas maganda naman uh, diba, ngayon talaga as compared sa mga dati. Kung dati na survive natin yung mga crisis na yun with that situation, I think ngayon kaya rin natin siya. So, uh, we just have to hang on and you have to check kanino ba naka-anchor yung hope mo. Naka-anchor ba yan sa karir mo? Naka-anchor ba yan sa pera mo? Naka-anchor ba yan sa mentors mo? Or ako, I would suggest you anchor that to the Lord. You anchor that to God. Kasi God is unshakable. Diba? Siya lang yung constant. Siya yung consistent na nandyan. And kung yung hope mo na sa Kanya, diba? you'd know na meron siyang plans for us. Plans to prosper us and not to, not to harm us. So, yun lang bro. Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, siguro, okay lang ba mag-plug ng content? Oh, oh yun yun uh, next na tatanungin ko sana. Yan. Thank you, thank you. Ah. So, uh, guys, if, you, if you're not already following us, please do follow us at The Bright Millennial. Uh, we also have a website, no, thebrightmillennial.com. And if you would want to, um, if you would want to uh, have a financial planning session with us, you could message the page or you could message me directly at my personal page. Garrett, ako, Garrett Maralit ng name ko sa personal page. Thank you so much, bro. Alright, maraming salamat, bro. Thank you for taking this interview. Alright. Ingat, stay safe. Salamat. Stay safe, bro. Salamat, salamat.